you will go this this is not a teaching but it will form something that will run with I'll read from New American Standard. Acts chapter 1, reading from verse 6 to 11. And so when they had come together, they were asking him, that's Jesus, Lord, is it at this time that you are restoring the kingdom to Israel? Verse 7. And he said to them, it is not for you to know the time, to know times and epochs or seasons which the Father has fixed by his own authority. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and even to the remotest part of the earth. Verse 9. And after he had said these things, he was lifted up while they were looking on, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And as they were gazing intently into the sky, while he was departing, behold, two men in white clothing stood beside them, and they also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into the sky? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in just the same way as he was as you have watched him go into. You know, I was looking at this, I was looking at some passage, and the Spirit of the Lord brought me alongside that passage to this passage. You know, when you look at this, from the beginning of this passage, it was telling us how Jesus completed his assignment, how he died, how he rose again, and at this time, he has appeared unto his disciples for over a period of 40 days. And the Bible record that he spoke to them, he preached the kingdom. Sometimes I were wondering, what was it that he was telling them within the 40 days? But the Bible noted that he spoke and preached the kingdom. But that Jesus Christ that resurrected for that 40 days, it was not the Jesus, the human Jesus that we knew that was of flesh and blood. It was the resurrected Christ. The Bible calls him the firstborn of all brethren. The one that had the bones, the one that had the flesh, but the one that can go through the walls. The ones that can appear and disappear. The one that is not greater than the angels. At this passage, the Bible said that the disciples, as he was about going and leaving them, that the disciples asked him, Master, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom? You know, God had already spoken about the kingdom being restored to Israel. When the people thought that Jesus having defeated the power of death, having been exalted, having made known to himself as the one that the Father has sent, as the Son of God, they thought he will now restore the kingdom to Israel, they were focusing on earthly kingdom. But Jesus spoke to them and said, "It's not yet your. It's not. It, it's not up to you to know the time and the season when the Father has ordained that such will be. 
You know, Jesus, even at resurrection, was submissive to the Father. Even at that time, it showed that many times, whatever you are, remain obedient, remain submissive, and know, not that Jesus didn't know. Because then he was fully God acting in his own capacity. He was the Son of God. You know, we have one God in three persons. So, they wanted the restoration of the kingdom. But Jesus was speaking to them about the kingdom of God. And many times as Christians, our mind, our focus is towards the earthly kingdom. Mm. We are engrossed with what is happening in the earthly kingdom. But we want to pray that the kingdom of heaven will be instituted in this earth. Amen. And that's what Jesus taught them. Oh, let your kingdom come. Jesus wanted to minister to us to tell us about the kingdom that supersedes the earthly kingdom. Amen. That we will no longer be focusing our efforts on establishing the earthly kingdom because the earthly kingdom is not what Jesus has mandated us to minister, to preach. They asked him, Lord, is it at this time that you are restoring the kingdom to Israel? They wanted their own safe place. And then the Romans were all ruling and they were having dominion over the nation of Israel. And they were thinking maybe probably that Jesus has come to restore the kingdom of Israel as it was in the time of David, as it was in the time of Solomon, as it was in the time of kings like Hezekiah, kings, all the kings that ruled and had dominion over the ends of the earth. But Jesus was telling them, no. It was not at this time. God has a time and a purpose for each and every one of us. And it's also important that we don't miss our timing. Because Jesus specifically told them, It is not for you to know the times, the period, when the Father has fixed for his own authority. But he went on to tell them that, that you shall what? Receive power. When the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be Jesus' witnesses. But in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and the Bible says, to the innermost, remotest part of the earth. You know, when you begin to look at this and you ask yourself, has this been fulfilled? No. Because my version says to the remotest part of the earth. You know, the Bible, the missionary started in Jerusalem. Let's look at something and we will be able to see. Holy Spirit, help us. Acts. You know, we know that the disciples were all in Jerusalem. So Jerusalem was their centerpiece. But let's look at Acts chapter 8, verse 1. And 2. He said, And Saul was in hearty agreement 
with putting him to death as a person. And on that day, a great persecution arose against the church in Jerusalem. And they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. So we see. In this passage, we can really see that what made the people to disperse, to go to the nations of Judea and Samaria was persecution. You know, many times we need the fire of God mm. to move us into action. Mm. Jesus said that anyone that must leave God, they must suffer, suffer persecution. And here, the Bible recorded there was a great persecution. Let's look at verse 5 of this. And Philip went down to the city of Samaria and began proclaiming Christ to them. These were people that didn't know Christ. But meanwhile, they were all proclaiming Christ to the Jews. Although it was going to those places, but it was restricted to the Jews. Let's look at Acts 13. I want to look at from verse 46 to 47. Acts 13. Acts chapter 13, yes. verse 46 to 47. Then Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly and declared, then Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly and declared, It was necessary that this good news from God be given first to you Jews. But since you have rejected it and judged yourselves unworthy of eternal life, well, you will offer it to the Gentiles. 47. 47. For this is as the Lord commanded us when he said, I have made you a light to the Gentiles to bring salvation to the farthest corners of the earth. Praise him. Hallelujah. You know, initially the gospel was preached to only the Jews. It expanded and went to Judea, Samaria, and other nations. However, it was restricted. But in Acts chapter 13, the Bible stated, if we look at that Acts 13 before I start saying, let me look at verse 1 and 2 of Acts 13. Verse 1 and 2 says, Now there were at Antioch in Judea, in Antioch, in the church that was there, prophets, teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger and Lucius of Cyrene, a man who, was, who had been brought up with terror, the tetra, and Saul. That's before Saul changed to Paul, verse 2. And while they were ministering to the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the works which I have called them. And their works, if you look at the whole of 13, that was the ministry, the missionary that started after they were separated. But they were not separated, but they continued moving. It was in Acts 15 that they separated. You see, God will orchestrate something that will put fire on you. Mm. When you are asking yourself, when your God is telling you to do something, sometimes the fire to do it is not there. But you need the power. How the power comes is only the sovereign will of God that can tell you how your fire will come. But today, I want us to believe God that the fire of God will fall in our midst. Amen. Amen. And Jesus said that they shall receive power when the Holy Spirit will come upon them. You know, receiving power it's not receiving the gift. 
is not receiving the infilling of the Holy Spirit. You know, today many of us say that we pray in tongues. Yes. Evidence that the Spirit of the Lord has come. Yes. However, is, this, is it an evidence that you have anointed, you've been received, you receive the power? The power to do what God says you should do. The Bible says that those that believe in Him, that they will do greater works than Jesus, even the things that He did. You know, when He sent them, out to go and minister, the 70, the 12. In Luke, the Bible said they came down and they were rejoicing that even the demons surrendered to them. And he told them that they shouldn't rejoice that the demons surrendered, but they should rejoice that their names were written in the Lamb Book of Life. Mm. And that's why he said that because many people will go and deceive others because of miracles, but their names are not written in the Lamb Book of Life. And that's why the Bible tells us, by their fruits you will know. Mm. People can call fire. People can do miracles. Like, look at the fruit, whether their names are in the Lamb Book of Life. But that's for another day. See, God wants to anoint us. You see, there's an interesting thing that happened in this passage. In verse 9. He said, and after this, he said to this, he said this, he was lifted up while they were looking on, and the cloud received him out of their sight. When he was lifted up while they were looking on, a cloud received him out of their sight. Out of their sight. You know, the Bible said that they were going with Jesus, having been spoken to, that they will receive power. I don't know how you feel when you have a mentor. When you have a mother that has become everything that you have in the physical. And God tells you, and the mother tells you, I'll be going somewhere without preparing you. Because there's no amount of preparation that will cause you to say that you are quit. And that's what happens with the baby ego. There's no preparation. They drop the baby go, and the mother sees the baby go falling and goes behind to catch. There's no amount of preparation. It's all about you dipping your leg inside the water and knowing that God that was and has been with your mother, with your mentor, is with you. And that's what Jesus did. He spoke to them and they saw him being lifted up in a cloud. And they were waiting and looking and gazing. When will our Lord come back to protect us? We are expecting him to be the one that will restore the kingdom of Israel. Remember in the book of Luke, the two men that were going to Emmaus, as Jesus was, as they were walking, Jesus confronted them, met them, and they began to ask Jesus, feigned as if he didn't know what was happening. And they were telling Jesus, are you new? Are you, are you, where are you coming from? Don't you know about the man, Jesus of Nazareth, a man I created with power and Holy Ghost? How the Jews killed him? And they were saying, and we heard that he is awake, that he has resurrected. And Jesus began to talk to them until they went to the place of communion. And Jesus spoke and they realized they were speaking with the master. You know how they felt? They said, was not our heart beating us? 
when Jesus was speaking. And immediately, Jesus turned them back. You know, there's a process that Jesus will use to reconcile you, to take you back to your calling. Those men, they've left the ministry because their protection had gone. Jesus today is calling us back. But let's look at what is going on. You know, in this passage, we are looking at Jesus having told them that he was good. I want us to look at John 16, verse 7. Before we look at John 15, 16, verse 7, let's look at John 14, verse 15 to 17. And we look at 16, verse 7. <coughs> John 14. Verse 15 to 17. John 14, 15 to 17. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my command. And I will ask the Father, isn't it? And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may be with you forever. 17. And that is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it does not behold him or know him. But you know him because he abides with you and will be in you. Let me look at 16. 7. He said, but I tell you, that's just 16 by 7. But I tell you the truth, it is to your own advantage that I go away. If I do not go away, the helper shall not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Mm. You know, Jesus, as he was going, they were looking at their immediate protection, their immediate provider, their immediate sustainer. They were looking at their intercessor. They were looking at the one that enabled them to go through the ministry without them paying the price. Mm, not <laughs> and they were fearful. The Bible said when... The shepherd is meeting. The Bible said the sheep will scatter. They were looking at Jesus and they were so fearful. But Jesus had already given them an instruction that they should wait for the promise of the Father. But he didn't give them the time and the day. So they had to go to the upper room. You know, the difference between us today is that we receive the Holy Ghost without waiting, mm -hmm. without praying Not for the power. Mm -hmm. So that when the Holy Ghost comes, it comes with power. Many of us receive him without power. Then we go there to pray for the power. Because there is no desire, there is no yearning for the ministration for the anointing, for the power of God that comes as a result of the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Where in Acts is the name? So. The Bible said, and as they were gazing, looking on, a cloud received him out of their sight. Mm. And I want to bring us a passage. We'll come back to this one. Mm. You know, until we let go, we will receive. Mm. <coughs> Let's look at Second Kings. Second Kings, chapter two. I'll be reading from verse eight to eleven. 
And it's a story about Elijah and Elisha. Just to summarize the beginning up to verse 8. The Bible states that Elijah and Elisha, a mentor and a mentee. Prophet Elijah and the son of the prophet, Elijah. The Bible states from chapter 2, 2 Kings, I'll come to that 8. Verse 1. He said, when it was time for Elijah to be taken to heaven, he began a journey with his son and the Lord, Elijah. And the Bible noted they went through four towns before he was taken. You know, many times God will take us through processes. And in those processes, there will be discouragement for you to follow. You know, God wants us to serve him. Yes. But God wants somebody that will serve him with serving with a heart, with truth, and in spirit. He doesn't want you to come half-heartedly. He wants you to come full of faith and your heart. Not lukewarm. One day there, one day the other side. He said, if you are lukewarm, you will spew out. Mm. And in this passage, one interesting thing about me is that I looked at this and I saw it started with Elijah going, living the journey from Gilgal or Gilgal, as anyone might call it. And that Gilgal is and the place that the children of Israel, when they crossed Jordan, where they dropped their stones. It was a place of remembrance, a place that the Bible calls it, it was a circle of stone. A, a testimony, a witness that God allowed them to cross Jordan. That was where they stopped mm. and they dropped the stones. And as they were there, the Bible recorded that Elijah told Elisha that God has instructed me to go back to Bethel. Bethel is the house of God. And he said, stay and wait for me. Mm. And Elisha said, no. You know, many of us are angry. And we, might be, we might be angry because our parents are treating us somehow. But in their heart of heart, they want the best out of They want you to be matured. They want you to be strong. They want you to survive out there. But you are looking at it, they don't pamper you. Elijah received the correct training. And from Gil, from Bethel, the house of God, he said, no, the Lord has told me to go to Jericho. They called Jericho the city of moon or a place of sin. And Elisha said, I will still follow you when he was discouraged. And as he was going, the Bible recorded that the sons of prophets saw him and said, Do you know that your master will be taken up? They are prophets, sons of prophets. And he said, I know, just keep your mouth shut. I'm focused. I know what I want. So as he was going, as he was about crossing, he said, God has then told me to go to Jordan. Elijah followed from Jericho to Jordan. Then we are taking it from verse 8. As they came to Jordan, remember, that was the first place that they crossed before they entered Canaan, the children of Israel, when they left Egypt. That was where they were circumcised before. They were circumcised before they crossed Jordan. And here, it became a crossing for Elijah to enter into glory. For another person to begin to manifest. And the Bible recorded in this verse, hey, let's read it. As they came to Jordan, the Bible said, Elijah took his mantle 
and folded it together and struck the waters and they were divided here and there so that the two of them crossed over on dry ground. Mm. I don't know what you'll be thinking about. Elijah was aware that the master would be living mm. and the water has parted and he, and he might be thinking if this water closes up what will be my fate? And many times we think about uncertainties of life. Not really knowing that God is setting you up for a miracle. He said they crossed on, on dry ground. And it came about, verse 9, when they had crossed over, that Elijah said to Elisha, I like this part. Verse 9. Ask what I shall do to you before I'm taken from you. Ha, Korobo Sanda. You know, in the book of John 14, verse 14 and 13 and 14, Jesus said, if you ask anything in my name, it's a blanket check. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Elijah was asking his son to be, or his son, the one that will take over from him. What would you want? You know, many times, many of us will say, God knows that he will empower me. Let me ask for money. Let me ask for house. Let me ask for nations. Let me ask for... But he asked for one thing. He said, in verse, in verse 9, and Elijah said, please let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. He didn't say grace. He didn't say a portion of your spirit. Mm -hmm. A double portion. I see the Holy Spirit is divided. But he wanted a strength, a grace that was twice that of Elijah. A boldness that was twice that of Elijah. An announcement that was twice that of Elijah. And he said, I want a double portion of your spirit. And Elijah, being a man that has already been in the court of heaven, was willing to unshun it, was willing to sanction his son. And he said, you have asked a half thing. <laughs> you know, half thing does not mean that it cannot be done. You have asked a half thing. That thing that you cannot do is a half thing. That only the mighty hand of God can do. You have asked a half thing. Nevertheless, if you see me when I'm taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if not, it shall not be so. Remember where we stop in Acts chapter 1 verse 9, 11. Verse 9, is that verse 9 or so there about? The Bible said they were looking at Jesus, it's 9. And they saw Jesus moving, being caught up by the cloud. And the Bible said as they saw him, they were gazing because they were still afraid. And two men that resembled angels came and said to them, why are you still gazing? Don't gaze because he will still come back to you. But here we're looking at Elijah and Elisha. Verse 10. And he said, you have asked a half thing. Nevertheless, if you see me when I'm taken from you, it shall be for you. But if not, it shall not. Mm. It's a 50-50. You know, many times, it depends on what you see. In the book of Genesis, the Lord took Abraham and after he divided with, after they split, he split with Lot. And he said, look up to the east, to the west, to the north, to the south. What you see, walk up around it. I don't think that Abraham walked around that, but he saw it. And with the eyes of faith, he was able to enter there. I want you to begin to think about what you can see. As this word is going, what do you see? He said, if you see me, <laughs> the double portion of my spirit will be yours. Mm -hmm. But if you don't see me, how you have missed it. How many of us today will be willing to see Jesus? 
I could have said that the disciples they saw Jesus, but they thought the grace would come upon them free of charge. This man has got Elijah has gone through first stages of discouragement from the sons of prophets from the master. The Bible says, if you die with him, you will be raised. You will, you will, you will live with him. You will reign with him. He will, if, if, you, if, if you don't die the death of the cross in your own spirit, in your own body, in your own flesh, you won't reign with Jesus. He said, if you see me, verse 11, then he came about as they were going along and talking that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire. We separated the two of them and Elijah went up by a wild wind unto heaven. In the book of Job, the Bible says that the wild wind comes from the south. But the Bible recorded here they were separated with chariots and horses of fire. That means a fire that passed people. And as the fire passed them, parted them, the Bible said he saw a corobosal. I want to move further to 13 if you don't mind. And Elijah saw it and cried out, My father, my father. The chariots of Israel and the horsemen, and he saw him no more. Then he took hold of the of his own cloak and tore them into two pieces. He also took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and returned and stood by the bank of Jordan. You know, as he stood there, he was thinking of what to do. Because prior to then, Elisha had not done any miracle. You know, miracle is something that starts in an instant. God will not announce to you when he will start with you. But I believe that many of us will receive the grace, the anointing, the power to begin to manifest the power even now. Because the covering over the nations have been poured. Whatever that has been limiting you has been destroyed. I'm going back to Acts chapter 1, verse 9. We've read verse 9. I'm going to tell As they were gazing intently into the sky, while he was departing, behold, two men in white clothing stood beside them, 11. And they also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into the sky? This Jesus, whom you have, who have seen, who you have seen taken off from you into heaven, will come in just the same way as you have watched him go into heaven. And I want us to understand that today, what we what I've just shared is the power to minister, mm. the power to be a good witness. And from then, looking at 2 Kings chapter 2, from then Elijah became a miracle worker. He performed twice of miracles more than Elijah. Elijah did not take about 8, he did about, seven, about 16. Because he had the double portion. He don't play with an anointed man of God. Mm. That's why when he was going, about 42 children were looking at him and calling him a man, a bird man. He called a bear and they devoured even the 42 children. Somebody might say today that that man was me. The Bible said, touch not my anointing. Mm. It's not something you proclaim with your mouth. It's something is demonstrated with power. Mm. You know, it's people who are defending men of God today. He's a man of God. He's a man of God. God forbid that we should be people that will be talking about men of God. It's the fire of God that will devote those that speak against men of God. There are people you talk about. You see something happening to you. Nobody will tell you not to. You know? God wants to talk to us. God says he will heal. He 
He said he will empower Amen. and that he will deliver. Amen. When you look at this passage in, in um, Second Kings, Elijah did not go through other processes. Immediately, if you read that Second Kings chapter 2, there were sons of prophets that were watching from afar. Immediately they saw the mantle and Elijah performing the same miracle that Elijah did to part the, to part the Jordan. They recognized that the spirit of Elijah has come to him. And they submitted to him. And he became the master. God wants to call us today. He wants to touch us. Amen. First of all, I want us to ask the Holy Spirit to empower us today. Begin to ask the Spirit of the Lord to empower you. As we've been empowering you, I, I sense in my spirit that the unction of prophetic will come upon apostle people. If of those that can pray in the spirit, begin to pray in the spirit. Begin to pray in the spirit. Rebo send the Rebo Kuria Kata Kata, come on this way. Oh, Karama send the Rebo Kuria Kata. Share take it again, the Bokuria Kata. Rebo send the Ramakuria Kata Kata Karabokuro was sent. Heke in the Ramakura Vasanda. Oh, la 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 Rebo send the Kia Bakura Bakoto. Come, Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit. Rebo see and tell about Kuria Kata. Oh, Rebo send the Kate Kerebo Sia Kashu. Come, but the Keriba send the Kata. Keriba send the Kira Bakuro was sent. Riba Baba 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 Jesus, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Father, we thank you. We thank you. Is there anybody requiring healing or anything in your stomach? Healing or anything in your stomach? Any type of healing? My sense in my spirit. A stomach issue. Oh, the Karabakuya Kata. Let's stretch our hand to our sister. 
Ole kira bakuya kara bakoro mukuya kata kara bakoro besa. Ori kata kemo sende kinda hambalende rebo bakuya kata. Oi andere bakuya kanda ramakoro besa. Le keri mukuya makere bosinda handa. Lord Jesus, say kere bosia kata. Lay your glory, lay your power, lend the hinder, and the hinder hamba kerya. Let it send the kerya. Let it send the kinder of a sender. Bandere bokuri hendere bokuria kata. Yanta kanta kente kerya. Riba kuria handa la makoro bosende. Raba kuria masende hele bosende ya. Wobriandere morinda hamba lendere bosia. Hey, 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 hey. Bonde ki ha ha. Lady Bosia Kara Bakuria Kata. Father, we cause every palinda, every spirit of infirmity. Father, cause it from its root in the name of Jesus. You will not see the way. You will not see the way. But the valley shall be filled with what? I don't know what you are, what you are desiring God for, but the Bible says Jesus, the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord is saying you will not see the rain. You will not see the way. But that valley shall be filled with water. It's not about the manifestation. It's about you knowing that it's already done in the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we just want to thank you. God is here in our midst. For those watching us, If you know that you have not made Jesus your Lord and Savior. You know, the Bible said, as we read in the book of Acts, it said that Jesus that they saw lifted up. They were gazing up because he was lifted up in a cloud and they saw him no more. And that of a lager, the Bible talks about the chariots of horses and of fire. Parting Elijah and Elisha and taking Elijah. Mm. As he took Elijah, those chariots of horses and fire, they could be the angels. As the angel, as Jesus was lifted up. He didn't fly. It could have been the angels of chariots. But the people, they were seeing him, but their eyes were not open to see what was happening in the spirit. Elijah spoke to Elisha, if you see me, it wasn't the natural sea. It was the spiritual sea. If you see what's happening in the spirit, and that's why Elisha said, my father, my father, the chariots, and the horsemen of Israel. If you have not received Jesus to be your defender, to be your Lord and Savior, to translate you out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of, the, of his son, or the son of his Lord, into the kingdom of life, now is the hour. Now is the time. Today is the day of salvation. I want you to know that Jesus loves you. That's why he died that you might not die. If you want to make him your Lord and Savior. If you want to trust your life unto him. So that you won't be gazing and fearful anymore. So that you will know. As he said in the book of John 17, in John 16 verse 7, 
that it is more advantage that he goes than that the comfort that the helper will come. Because if he doesn't go, that the helper will not come or the comforter. God is sending you today another comfort. Thank you, Jesus. Repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I acknowledge my errors. I acknowledge my sin. I acknowledge that I have lived without you. Today, I come to you and I ask that you forgive me of my sins, of my rebellions. Take me now. As your child. As your child. <coughs> Cleanse me Cleanse from my sin, from my sin. With, your blood. with your blood. Make me, Make me a, brand a brand new person, born, born of, the of the Spirit and of the Word of God. Word of God. I decree and I declare that I am a born again Christian, born of the water and of the spirit. I'm a brand new man. Let me pray. Fill me with your spirit. In Jesus' name. Let me pray for you. For those that pray this prayer, Father, I ask, oh Lord, that as Jesus said that he kept those that you gave him with the power that's in your name. Father, I ask those that have prayed this prayer that they will not fall, they will not fall. Amen. That you will keep them. Amen. That you will lead them. Amen. That you will guide them. Amen. Baptize them with your spirit. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. For those that pray this prayer, depending on where you are, We meet in homes. We have places that we meet. If you are around, contact us. But if you are not within London, or you are not within the area, find a Bible-believing church. Worship the Lord and make him your Lord and Savior all the days of your life. Amen. 